Welcome to Electron Online, and here's a new topic considering refraction. It's something called the total internal reflection. This is an interesting property of the fact that light refracts when it crosses a boundary. So let me explain how this works. Let's say that you're underwater with your scuba gear and you're shining a beam of light, light from inside the water to the surface and then of course the light will refract away from the normal since the light beam would be traveling from an index refraction which is greater to a region where the index refraction is smaller so you can see the light bending away from the normal. Then as you increase the the angle of incidence onto the boundary. You can see that the angle of, of uh, refraction becomes bigger and bigger and bigger and eventually if the angle becomes big enough here relative to the normal the angle of refraction will be 90 degrees meaning that the beam that leaves the surface will just skim along the surface of the water. And what happens then when you increase the beam or increase the angle of incidence beyond that, then you'll find that the light will no longer leave the surface but actually reflect off the surface as if the surface was a mirror. It will not leave the, the water. So the angle at which the angle of refraction is 90 degrees, that we call the incident angle equal to the critical angle. That's the angle at which if you go beyond it, like we show right here, if this is a critical angle and the incident angle is greater than the critical angle, you will then have what we call total internal reflection. And so that will depend upon, of course, what the index of refraction is from the medium that the beam is coming from and the index of refraction of the medium where the beam is going to. Let's assume that we have air and water. Let's find out what the critical angle is in this case. So again, using Snell's law, we can say that N1 sine of theta 1 is equal to N2 sine of theta sub 2. And then we know that if theta sub 1 is equal, right here, is equal to the critical angle, then theta sub 2 will be equal to 90 degrees. So let's replace theta sub 1 by the critical angle and theta sub 2 by 90 degrees, and we get N1 times the sine of the critical angle is equal to N2 times the sine of 90 degrees. And of course, the sine of 90 degrees, that's equal to 1. And so this cannot be written as N1 sine of the critical angle is equal to N2. Dividing both sides by N1, we get the sine of the critical angle is equal to N2 over N1. And finally, the critical angle can be found by taking the arc sine of N2 over N1. That's the general equation. Now, if we plug in the numbers, we can see that in this case, the critical angle is equal to the arc sine of N2. N2 would be... Um, hmm, which one is N N1 and N2? Well, since we're coming from this, this region to that region, we'll call this N1, we'll call this N2. So in this case, N2 is 1, and N1 is 1.33. And then if we grab our calculator, it's right here. So we take 1 divided by 1.33, and we take the arc sine of that, and it turns out it's 48.8 degrees in this particular case. So that's the critical angle, which means that if you shine a beam of light from underneath the water to the surface and there's air above and you make that angle more than 48.8 degrees relative to the normal, the light will not leave the water. It will simply reflect out of the surface and come back down. And that's how you work with the total internal reflection.